Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK, part of IBM Europe. In this movie, we're going to be looking at the File Permission Manager, or FPM for short. This is part of the System Hardening Tools. This command is part of the AIX System Hardening Tools. There are other movies on AI Expert and Role Based Access Controls. The File Permission Manager is available on AX 5.3 in the later technology levels and in AX 6. But let's not forget also that it's perhaps more important to first close down the standard ways that hackers get onto your machine, and that is by making Telnet secure by using SSH, using secure FTP instead of FTP, and of course using better passwords on your system. After that, the top hacker target is these set user ID and set group ID programs. If they get onto your machine as a regular user, they want to boost their permissions, their privileges up to the root user, and this is their prime target. Executable files that have these privileges set means that when they're running, they're actually running as the root user rather than the regular user. In the past, how do we go around looking for these programs? Well, we can use the standard AIX or Unix find command looking for programs owned by the user root and has the execute and set to ID bit set. The trouble is you end up with a long list of files in your system. And then you've got to answer the question, well, should they all be set to user ID? Some files absolutely have to have this bit set, otherwise your AIX system won't run at all. You'll find if you logged off, you can never get back on if you go around and set all the set user ID bits off. But of course, some of them can be switched off, particularly programs that are only run typically by your systems administrator. And on many machines that are run as servers, we don't let users log on to the machine anyway. So that it's only the root user or privileged users that are actually allowed to log on. So we can remove a lot of these set UID bits. Now if you do a default install of AIX, you'll find that there's around 265 root user commands with a set UID bit. These are split into two categories. There's about 45 of them which are best left untouched, that are quite important for AIX to run properly. But there's roughly 220 commands that if you don't let users log on to your machine normally, only the... Uh, systems administrators, then you can actually stop the set UID bits on those programs for extra security. If you install some of the extra packages that come with AIX that are optional, then you'll find that there's a, a roughly speaking 50 more commands with the set UID bit that could have it removed. It is these 270 commands that FPM is targeted at and will remove the set UID and set group ID bits to make your machine more secure. Now out of those 45, um, you have to take some care with these. Um, if you do remove the set UID or set group ID bits, then you need to do some extensive testing because you may not be using them directly, but indirectly an application or perhaps another tool or a script will want to use these commands and assume that they will go set UID when they run. So if you're going to set those, do some careful testing. Some probably can be removed, for example, FTP and Telnet, so that only the root user can use those, nobody else can. And there's those R commands, the uh, remote shell, remote execution commands. They probably can have it safely removed. But if you go into that area, you're at your own risk. You really do need to do some testing on a non-production machine, of course. When you've installed AIX and start it up for the first time, you'll be at the default security level for FPM. FPM stores in this particular file the settings for all the files that it will control. So an example line here is that the set UID bit and the set group ID bit and the read and execute permissions here for the user sbin login command, which of course clearly needs to be a set UID program. This can be used that if you go to a higher security level and then you mess up your security settings, for example, you can then go back to the default level and FPM will actually set all those particular commands that it's controlling back to the default level as you installed AIX. So that's a good safety net. If you go to the high security level, 
FPM looks through this particular file, high FPM list, and it will remove the set UID and group ID bits from all the files contained in that file. If you go to the medium level, it will go through a slightly different file with MED on the front, and it will remove the set UID and group ID bits. If, however, you go to the low security level, note that there isn't a separate file here. It's the same file, but it just removes the set UID bit. The group ID bit will remain. These files for the high, medium and low level security just contain a list of files. It doesn't contain the permissions because it just uses the list of files to remove the particular security bits. OK, then I've logged on to my AX system. The OS level minus S command at the top here tells me that I'm running AX 6.1, technology level 2, service pack 3. So that's the latest commonly available version of AX uh, when I'm doing this moving. And then I run the FPM command with a minus S. This gives us the status and it's telling us that we're the default level of security. So it's as we would get it if we just installed AIX. I'm going to run the find command here. Uh, searching for all files for uh, all files owned by root and the permissions the minus sign here means just if this bit is set and it's the user executable and set UID. I'm going to throw any uh, error messages I get and it will actually list me a couple of files in slash proc where the set user ID bit is used for something else. So if we just run that uh, command we get a list of them there um, some of them you probably recognize uh, as important to the running of the system and some of them uh, not so. For example here the uh, user bin su command obviously that has to be able to change uh, user so it's a set user ID bit program. If I rerun that command and uh, count the number of lines we have there we have 258 programs then that have the set user ID bit set. OK then, let's use uh, FPM to make our system more secure. If we go minus P, this is a preview option, minus L, the level we want to go to, and high. This will give us a list of all the changes that it's going to actually make. It gives us a bit of information in here that we'll, we'll see later on, giving us a clue of what it's actually going to do. And then we have a list here of all the commands that it's going to alter and the change mod command that's going to be used to do that. Okay, if we assume that's okay, we'll actually execute that now. There's a minus V option if you want verbose output and you'll actually get, uh, again, the same list of things it's going to change and some of the programs that it can't change. Uh, because they're not actually, uh, the install packages haven't been added, so they're not actually on the system. So it's gone through that list of uh, operations. It's giving you some information here. It's also giving us the fact that it's got a, a log file and it's uh, named here. And we can use that to get back to where we were. We're in the default uh, setting, so it doesn't actually make uh, any difference. But if we made personal changes, then we could get back to where we were before we ran the command. Now, if we have a look at uh, setting or state, we're at uh, high level, and we'll rerun that find command and find how many programs are still got set user ID. So we're now at uh, 47, a lot lower, and those ones we are still set UID, we can have a look at some of those and uh, remove them if we're happy that it won't affect the running system. Now let's rerun that command and find some of the names of the remaining set UID programs. One of them down the bottom here is a program that I've uh, created, user local bin myprog. You may have guessed that by the name, perhaps. But there are some others in here that we think, well, we don't need regular users to be able to run this command. There's one here called user sbing ping. So we can say, well, we're happy that users aren't allowed onto this machine and we don't want them to be able to use ping. The super user, of course, will still be able to use his programs to run the super user commands. It just means that regular users can't get the boost to super user privilege 
using the set URD bit. So I'm going to use the custom file settings that we have with FPM to try to stop these two programs being set to user ID. So how can we make custom changes to the way FPM works so we can control some of our files as well as the standard AIX ones? Well in this directory, but instead of FPM slash data with FPM custom, then we have a series of directories and we put a file in there for the operations we want it to take when we go to high level setting or the default setting. The files in the default directory are just like the FPM files itself. It has the permissions at the front and then the file names. And then if we want to go to high, medium or low, then we have to add a files a file to the appropriate directory for the setting that we want. So in this example we're going to in the custom high directory we'll create a file and in there we just have the file names of the files we want the set UID bits and the set group ID bits to be removed when we go to the high level. We'll now have a quick look at an example of that that we have here. I've got my own program in user local bin and if I go to high security I only want the root user to run that and I'll also say that uh, this ping program, I don't see any point in allowing users to run that and uh, when I go to the high setting again I'll stop the regular users from being able to use the ping command. have to be careful if uh, there are some applications that are running as regular users they too won't be able to use the ping command when I go to high security. Let's have a look at how to do that online, it's very simple. So let's clear the screen Okay, now we're going to change to this directory, user lib security, FPM, and custom in this directory, and the ones below it are the custom files that we can create. Instead of um, custom, if that was uh, data, in that directory we find the standard files that come with AIX, and I don't recommend we change the those files. They may change as you update your versions of AIX. So we'll change this directory, it should be empty. And we'll create a uh, little file called my my apps. And so in here we're going to put the list of programs that we want to not have super user ID and group ID set when we go to the high level because we're in the high directory. So I'll just add those now. Okay, we'll save that file. Then we'll go to one level up and we go to the default directory. Again, this should be empty. And we'll create a file in there. It can be any name we like. If we had more than one application, we might have a separate file for each application for the binaries that come with that application and then we could be a bit more uh, generic and only install the files we need for the application that's actually running on this machine. Uh, in here we need to set the permissions that if we want to go back to the default settings so this file has the set UID bit and the read write execute um, flags and the actual file names. So I'll just type those in now. Okay there we go we've got the the 4 and the 6, the, the 4 is the super user bit and the 6 is the super user set UID and the set group ID bit and then we have uh, read and execute permissions for everybody. So we'll save that file. Of course at the moment we are at high level aren't we? Okay so let's go down to the low level. It gives us some information there about what it's actually doing. Let's just check, for example, the settings for my application. So at the moment it is the permissions as we had in that uh, default file. And then if we want to go up the level, let's return to that high level directory. we should have the permissions of these two files reduced. 
Let me just have a look at uh, ping as well. Okay, let's go up now to level high. If we put the verbose in here again, we get a whole load of information, and it actually tells us that we're going to. Be, it will open the custom file that we've been uh, just set up. Okay, so we go quickly back. Ping there has got the set user ID bit removing. There's an S here and uh, just the execute here and if we look at my program again that now has the execute permission missing here it's just an X up here had set user ID and set group ID now I have cheated slightly here when I ran the command and um, it was going to use the custom files I was in the directory in which the custom file was held for the where I was going. So if I was going to high level, I was in the directory of the uh, high file. There was a, a slight bug that I found when uh, practicing for this movie. And I'm sure it will be fixed now. I've reported it and it will be fixed. There's probably an update for that already by the time you see this movie. It was uh, very confusing because it would say that if you did with verbose mode, it would say that it found the file but then failed to actually uh, make the changes. Well, that's the file permission manager. It's fairly simple to operate and use. If you want further information, then take a look at the roadbooks, in particular the AIX6 advanced security features. Don't forget this is one part of the system hardening tools available to us.